Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Right, we're going to have a great session today. And so here's a question I have for you. If you were uh, driving down a road and uh, and you come up to, you're trying to get somewhere and on your GPS, right, it says, this is this is the way to go. And, and as you're, you're going that way, uh, you come up a sign and it says detour. Can't go this way, stop. Or the road just ends, what would you do? You would... You, you, would, you would simply find another way, right? You follow the detour, you go around another way. And then if you're going there uh, and, there, you know, for again, you get another stop sign, oh, you can't go this way, what would you do? You would you would find another way, wouldn't you? You'd just find another way and keep going. And and that's it's such a good thing to remember and uh, to, you know, maybe anchor that in that the truth is, is that a lot of times in life, oh, yeah, cool, I'm trying to start a business. Oh, this didn't work. Oh, I guess I should just sit on the side of the road and cry right? It is, is as you're going towards something, there are going to be detours. There are going to be dead ends. You are going to take the wrong, the wrong thing. But just like when you're driving down the road, you know, it, it's simply going, well, I'm going to stay in that end result. I still want to get to that destination. I'm not just going to give up and go home just because the road that I wanted to take isn't the, the right one, right? And just, just really, you know, remembering that, that, that on your journey of creation, it's okay to go down a road that, that you have to turn back around, back out and come down another one. And also to remember sometimes in this journey of creating um, what it is you love, that uh, there may be some learnings you need to pick up along the way that allow you to have what it is that you love. There may be things that you need to revise, recode, let go of. And sometimes what looks like a breakdown is a breakthrough. What looks like going, everything's going wrong is actually creating the space for the right thing to show up. Sometimes the divorce or the, the diagnosis of the illness or the, the bank account or the uh, with nothing in it or the business falling apart is creating the space for what it is you truly want to come through. You know, sometimes you want to plant this new garden, but the garden is already there. It needs you to take sort of a, you know, a lawnmower to it and clear that thing out because there's simply no space for it to grow. And, and the only thing that ever matters is that you stay in that end result of that which you're creating. That's it. As long as you stay there and you, you know, you just keep buying the other way till you get there. Uh, that, that's what's most important. So today I wanted to discuss and talk to you. Uh, so Sharon said, everything happens for our reason. Yes, it doesn't mean it's a good reason. It happens for a reason. It's funny, I was having a chat with Jesse this morning and she said to me, she goes, yeah, nothing, you know, nothing's ever quite like that. I can't remember what we're talking about right now. Nothing's like that. I was like, yeah, well, there's nothing quite like anything. Everything's always just quite like that. Anyway, so everything, there's a reason for everything, you know? Our reason, whether we know that reason or not. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the back to the topic. We're here to create a life we love. The, the main premise of Magnetic Mind is to understand that your life is not a problem to be solved. If you create a life that you love and you create things that you love, inherently based in creating what you love, living your true nature and purpose, being the predominant creative force, inherent in being that, if you create a life you love, you aren't depressed, you aren't unhappy. If you create a life you love, it includes having a body the right way. It includes having a healthy, vital, uh, excited, energized way of being. By creating that, that which we think is a, quote, problem no longer exists. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so as we focus on that creation, that which we think is a problem doesn't exist because we've, we've created this instead. If you create abundance and joy and, and richness and an amazing life and, and art and poetry and, and music and, and amazing friendships, you create all that. You don't have these problems anymore. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. You create what you create a life you love. You don't have you don't have depression, do you? Create a life you love. You don't have anxiety. So, so by focusing on creating, we create the conditions, circumstances, uh, and experiences of what it is we choose. 
However, if we focus on how it is and what is wrong, and we, uh, we try to fix that, and we, we obsess about how it is, the thing that we don't want always has to exist. And this is the core premise. If you have a clear instruction to your unconscious to not be in New York, it can go anywhere. But the one thing that must exist is New York. Because it's the one thing it can't go to. So it must always exist. But the brain doesn't know where to go to. So it says, just go anywhere but New York. So it goes just outside the state. It goes to uh, Oregon. It goes to LA. It goes to Asia. It goes to, it goes to you know, the next, uh, it goes, goes out in the ocean somewhere. It goes anywhere. It goes up in a plane, anywhere but New York. Does that make sense? The only thing that it must know is New York exists. So, so the thing is, is cosmic consciousness creating, if we create from a place of this is what's wrong and I'm going to try to get away from it, that that which is wrong must always exist. And so the core premise of being in a magnetic mind is to become the magnet for that which you want to create by completely taking all of this conscious focus, placing it on that which you'd like to see manifest, putting energy into that. So then that manifests saying, I want to be in Sydney. Then that's what creates. You're no longer in New York because you focused on Sydney. You focus on LA, so you're no longer in your focus on Austin, Texas. So you're no longer there. You focus on living in Singapore. You're no longer there, but you focus on what you wanted, so you got somewhere. And this is such a, a simple thing to explain, but I want everyone to get magnetic mind is about the creative process. Magnetic mind is about the creative process. And the creative process is tuning in to the, uh, the, the invisible made up world that we also exist in in our imagination and in our, in our inner world, in our thoughts and our images, tuning into that, choosing out of the absolute abundance of things that we could decide that we want to create, picking one off the shelf and focusing on that until we see it manifest. That's what it's about. It's about focusing on that and being a magnet for it. When you become it, then you will see it. That's what this is about. Now, the creative process is the most spiritual process in the world, is turning a thought of an amazing family into a thing, being creator, made in the image of focusing on, on this, it, taking, taking these ideas and dreams and wishes, choosing them and seeing them manifest by being a magnet. How do we become a magnet? We already are it. We arrive at it before it arrives. We become it before it comes to be. We are it. And that's the focus. So why do we do these processes? Why are we here every single week focusing on creating, noticing what's in the way, letting go of it? Because all of us have gone on a journey that had us forget who and what we really are. Who and what we really are. And this is, this is by design. This is by design. In order for us to be able to have an experience of life, we have to be able to experience both sides of something. If you cannot experience hot, you cannot experience cold. If you cannot experience um, being poor and in scarcity, you cannot experience being rich and in abundance. You have to have the opportunity to experience both, to live in polarity. Without me knowing I'm me and you, you, I can't, I can't interact with anything else. So it is absolutely imperative that we create a limited perspective. This isn't a problem, it's a design, it's a function. However, as we create that limited experience called having a human experience, creating an identity, Carl Jung calls it individuation, becoming an individual, uh, a one perspective floating on the wave of consciousness, as we become that, we actually forget that we're also the other thing. We forget that we're also the all and the individual, so we lose it. And what's interesting in today's society, we don't have an initiation to say you're no longer a kid anymore and you can let go of learning how to be an individual and you can actually return to being a powerful creator. And that's why this course is so important. That's why it's the best investment you've ever made in your life. It was my best investment and why I get to share it with all of you because returning to the creative energy and the creative spirit and being a creator while also being able to experience it as an individual is everything. Being able to be a creator, noticing you are all and any and you can choose it, but then being able to experience it as an individual is everything. And so, so I want to make sure we get some basics to done today because, you know, one thing that I know is, you know, obviously I played basketball as a career 
is the basics matter. If you, if you can't dribble and do layups and pass the ball, doesn't matter all the other fancy skills. You've got to get the basics right. The basics are everything. And the basics in this is, is to understand where you are, how you arrived where you are, and the focus of where we need to go. So we're going to get some fundamentals uh, and get through some basics today, which I which I think for, for many of us uh, is revision. I'm actually going to pull some out of our... Uh, our live event here and, uh, and and have some fun with with that today. So let me just grab my screen share. So I want to take you through the super conscious journey. Everyone in the certification will be able to basically explain this uh, once they're certified word for word. So let me just press um, play on this. Can you guys all see my screen? Someone give me a yes screen in the chat or something. Cool, cool. Thank you. Got it. Cool. So, so you know, this is um, straight out of our workbook, which um, you guys have got a full replay to that three-day event, and I highly recommend that you have have done it. Uh, this is also in my book. So, this is the journey to superconscious living. So, we start out up there uh, at number one, pure creative spirit, meaning we are a complete creative energy. We are uh, an idea that comes together with our, our father and our mother coming together. And we become an idea. And when, when we, we, we shift from an idea to, you know, an ideal to an identity, idea to identity, I guess, we, we get everything that we need. We're fed through a tube that goes through our stomach from our mothers. We get everything we want. And, and we have everything. We're this pure creative spirit, literally a spirit creating by joining cells together in some sort of crazy fractal geometry that turns this idea into a little living embryo that grows into a baby but we have everything we're just a spirit creating itself uh taking uh what we need and and building ourselves with our mother's love and energy and support into into a little a little human we then move to stage two at stage two we become an individual we're born and as we as we enter out to this world, at some point we realize we're no longer connected to our mother. We realize that we're actually an individual. And uh, you know, very interestingly, we become this individual, and Carl Jung calls it individuation. For for we realize that there is there is us, and then there is her, and then we realize there's us, there's her, and then there's others. Does that make sense? We realize that there's there's others as well. And we realize there's things that we can, can get, things that we like to feel and things that we don't like to feel, okay? And we look for belonging. As we look for belonging, we, we need safety because at this age, we cannot fight, we cannot flee. We look up to both parents uh, to, to, to know that we exist, to know that we're seen, to know that we matter, and also to know that we, we're safe and we belong. Does that make sense? to know that we are safe and that we are belong, that we belong. In this experience, we learn what we need to learn in order to belong to that family, okay? We learn what we need to learn to belong to that family. A very important statement is in a family of thieves, the child who does not steal feels guilty. And we, we, we want to feel innocent. We feel innocent when we belong with the family. So however the family is going to be. And we realize there's things that we can do to feel like we belong more to our mother and belong more to our father. Put another way, there's also things we can do to feel like we don't belong as much. Criticism to the three-year-old's brain feels like it's being rejected. Is that true? Criticism, shame, being told off, being naughty feels like we don't belong as much. It feels threatening. It feels I better get my act into shape. It feels like that's the person and people that can nourish and feed me and keep me safe. And then on the opposite spectrum, when we do things that gets praise and attention and, and love and joy, and we see that others react to us, that feels like we belong even more. And so what happens is whatever we choose and decide creates more safety and belonging at step number three, which also might be age number three. <laughs> whatever we decide becomes how we orient to our life. 
Does that make sense? It's how we orient, meaning orient means how where you're focused, where you're pointed, which direction. Are you oriented south? Are you oriented north? And so we orient our life towards a certain agenda, a certain agenda. And there's nine main agendas, the agenda to be perfect, the agenda to be uh, needed or worthy, the agenda to be valuable, the agenda uh, to be loved, the agenda to, to be safe and understand, the agenda to find authority, the agenda to be happy, the agenda to dominate and have power, the agenda to ensure there's no conflict. There's agendas and we find one and we create our life. Our life actually becomes about overcoming whatever it is that we've decided. So many of us end up orienting this way. And instead of going for what they would love, instead of saying, you know what I would love is to travel the world and go surfing or write books or start an amazing family or just work in the veggie garden or start a food forest or ride horses every day. I would love to, to write poetry or, or, or work with dolphins or whatever it is. Instead of going for what we love, we're so busy trying to overcome this agenda. In an unworkable way to finally belong more to our family. And most people are walking around with these childish wounds on full display. And their life is actually focused on finally overcoming those wounds. But the problem is, if they were to actually overcome that childish wound, they would no longer know who they are. Because the only way that they know how who they are is through that wound. Therefore, that it is unworkable and anything that is inside that structure is never allowed to be successfully manifest. If they believe that they're not valuable and if they're going to create a business and make millions of dollars to finally be valuable, they'll never have those millions of dollars because if they were to have those millions of dollars, they would then completely contradict their egoic agenda and no longer know who they are. They would no longer know who they are. They would no longer know how to orient and it would feel completely unsafe. Anything that we experience between ages of, of zero and four, we code up as experiences we can survive. And so we continually seek out those experiences. So if you if you live in a, in, a, in a certain structure, a certain place, you keep finding it, you keep bumping into it, you keep on looking for it in different ways. And if you become so successful that you can no longer uh, create that same structure, you then outsource it and find it in your children or in your partner or in your workplace, but you'll find a way back there. If you can't find it because you're so successful in your career, you'll manifest a health problem that says that, that does the same thing, but you won't escape it. Until you come here to magnetic mind and we say, you know what? You're not broken. Actually, this is a very very elegant system to create an individual perspective and it's perfect <laughs> and it's there's nothing wrong here and we're not broken and we've just been creating an identity and it is now time to let go of that childish orientation childish childlike a very different this is it is is a childish wound the individuation process was needed and at some point we need to let it go and we need to become powerful adults creating a life we love and so that's what we do here at, at step five so the first thing that you must decide is to become a creator who's with me to become a creator a creator isn't a problem to be solved a creator knows that they needed to create an individual perspective and that there's a lot of benefit inside that individual perspective for example the woundedness if you have a similar one to me was the idea that I wasn't valuable and I needed to do something to be valuable. Well, inherent in learning to be valuable and to do something that is valuable, I learned how to create a lot of value. And so there was nothing wrong with that. If you have the perspective of not feeling perfect and the need to be perfect, you know how to make things beautiful and you have got high ideals. People follow those who can see the higher ideal and will have high integrity and be perfect. So there's massive value in it. 
It's just using it in the right way. If you needed to be needed, you have a keen sense of what other people need. But once you find how to use that ability, but also to be a creator, not trying to solve it, you get to use your superpower. I want you to get this. Inside your egoic agenda is a superpower. Inside your egoic agenda is your superpower. It created you, it created it. But what you've got to understand is that we must decide to become a creator and live four core choices. And so if you're brand new to this program, the very first thing that we're going to ask you to do is to live four choices. And this is the first part here at the bottom of the shift, connecting to your superconscious and living choices. Who can tell me what these four choices are? These four choices you can have now, you can have later. These four choices are the, the core choices that point you in the direction of being a creator and being completely happy as you are now. Choice number one is I choose the end result of living a life I love. I choose the end result of living a life I love. There is no reason why you can't love your life right now and in the future. You can have it now and in the future, meaning you're above any reality. The second choice is... And these are in no order. These are all the first core choices. Okay, the second is I choose the end result of being the predominant creator, the predominant, the primary, the main creative force in my life. I choose to be that. You're not the only. <laughs> there's a, a higher intelligence. There's other people. There's, uh, there's other animals on the planet. There's lots of other creators. We live in a co-creative environment, but you're going to be the main creative force in your life, the main one. And so we choose that. So you don't play victim. Being the predominant creator in your life is where, where things can happen that aren't so uh, aren't exactly as you want it, but you choose to rise above and create it as you want it. That's the second choice. So I choose a life I love, or I choose the end result of living a life I love. I choose the end result of being the predominant creative force. That's number two. Number three, I choose the end result of health and vitality. Of course, you must have a body, a vessel to experience it all. So we all choose it. You can have health and vitality right now because you've got breath in your lungs. You've got, you've got uh, blood pumping through those veins. You're alive. You're here. That's enough. You can choose to have health and vitality at whatever level you want. You can be moving towards more, and uh, you can also have it now. We choose that. We all want to have a, have, a, have a body, but it's not a problem to be solved. It's just we all choose it always, every time, no matter how your health is or isn't. The last is I choose the end result of living my true nature and purpose. And these are the four core choices to start your day off. The last one, your true nature, your truest nature. When you really connect to that, the truest nature of a human being is to be a creator. The truest nature of being a human being is to be a creator. How do I know? Just look at what we create. Look what we do with life. We create buildings and we create cars and we create families and we create sports and we create events and we create joy and we create art and we create music. We just create. We create language. You see, no other species does this that I've seen. <laughs> true. So our, our, our true nature, it's obvious, is to be a creator. Now, our purpose is how we apply that creative spirit. You see how we apply it. So we decide to live these core four. We choose it. We choose to live these right now. We, unapologetically, we choose to love our life. Does that sound good? We just choose to be the predominant creative force. We choose to, to be healthy and vital. And we choose. Now, it's very likely that as you make that choice, there are going to be unconscious instructions from your egoic agenda that says you can't have that. You can't have a happy life. You can't love it. You can, you, you're, you're a victim. You're not, you're not the predominant creator. You, you're not healthy and vital. Look at that. You've got no flexibility. Your hip is sore. Your back is out. You know, you don't have a, the, the, the best smile. You don't have this. You, you, you'll go, I can't live my true nature and purpose. I'm just broke. So what we do, you can see step six there is we recode the unconscious instructions causing resistance to having it all now. There is no good reason why you can't live these four except the good reasons that you've decided to hold on to. And when you live these four, you make the shift. And all of you that are starting out in your first one week, two weeks, three weeks, month, even three months, sometimes six months, those are enough choices to work on. Who agrees with that that's been in here for a while? When you really understand this work, you know that those choices are enough to start with for months, if you like.
However, those of you who want to, to then move into actually turning thoughts into things, being a um, reality bender, being able to move and shift and shape things as you as you like it, to shape consciousness and put uh, you know your thought into a form, we then show you how to make other choices on top of these four. But these four never go. We then use superconscious insight, intuition, and uh, allow ourselves to make choices we love. We only create things we love, and 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 uh, and that's very important. We're not doing it for any other reason than we would just love it. I would just love to see this manifest. I would love to have a house like this, or I'd love to have a car like that, or I would love to have a relationship like this. I would love to have a body that looks like that. I would just love it. If you have to have any reason after I love it, then you're... you're you're in some sort of narrative is you are allowed to create and have that which you choose. And we always imagine that we're sitting down at a, uh, a universal restaurant with a menu that has got access to every chef that ever existed ever. And we realize that we can have any food on this menu, but we can't have every food. Because if we were to try to have every food, we'd get maybe through the first 15 meals and not enjoy the rest of them. There's no possible way to actually enjoy every food. And that's the same in life. There's no possible way to enjoy every single possible thing that you could create. So you could have anything, but you cannot have everything. So this is where we get to choose. We get to use conscious thought to choose that which we would like to experience with no judgment. We get to choose it. And then there's going to be resistance towards those extra choices. So you see the first lot of choices between five and six this is accessing that magnetic moment, the being it to see it. Once you're already living a life you love, you are the creative force, you are healthy and vital, you are living your true nature and purpose. Then you make the second shift where you start going, well, now I'm doing all that. What else would I love? People say, but Chris, if I'm already living a life I love, why would I need to create anything else? Because that's what it's to be human, to take thoughts and turn them into things for no other reason than you'll just love to create an amazing holiday or you'll just love to create an amazing business. You just love it. We just get to sit on the uh, the razor's edge of the creative journey and, and turn these thoughts into things. And when you recode those resistance, follow through, turn those thoughts into things, that is when you're super conscious, living your truth, have it all now, and you get to have more of what you love because that's just what you love to do. And that's the journey. That's the journey. So who enjoyed uh, a little trip down memory lane there? Those have been here for a while to remember the journey that we're on. And then how many of us for first, second, third or fourth week just needed to remember what we're up to here? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> let, me, let me see if I can see your chat box for a second. I'll stop this the screen share. My team wanted me to really get back and just, just share the, the journey to, to remind, remember you back to what we're, what we're up to. So you're not broken. You went through an individuation process to, to create your limited perspective so that you could experience the world. In doing that, you got caught up in some structures. The first thing is you must live the core four. Recode, live that. Then we shift into finding what we would truly love to add to that. What we do here at Magnetic Mind is every week we have multiple sessions like this where you pick a choice. It can be part of the core four. It can be other choices. And we work with your consciousness to be okay to receive that, to live that, to be it. And we do it every single week. Then there is a whole online university, which you can engage in. Guess what I heard? There are now over 900 recorded sessions in the Magnetic Mind University. So we're sorry that there's not enough variety. We're, do, we're, we're doing our best to, to, to make sure that, you know, you don't get bored. But we've got 900 uh, sessions in there. there. There's everything that you could ever, ever need, but there's also a plan to get you started. My perspective, if you're going to start anywhere, start with the uh, start with the three days that we do. We do one day a month every day uh, of this process. Start with that. Start with that. There's downloads, there's meditations, there's morning routines, there's how to plan your life. Uh, there's a lot there and it's uh, always, always, always expanding. So sorry that, it, that it's such underwhelming amount. Uh, I know we're going we're gonna to try to get a few more in. So where does that leave us for, for today? And, and what is it that's really important for us to discuss? By knowing where we are and kind of knowing where we're going, 
it really sets up a really good structure. So if you haven't gone and got choices sorted, that's okay. We can always work with the core four choices. That, that's completely fine. We can always work with those. And, and to be honest, most of us, when we really, I guess when we, <laughs> when we really admit it, those are the four that we need to work on the most. Because if we were truly living a life we love, there's a lot that fits into that. True. If we were truly the predominant creative force, having all the emotions that we're choosing, having all the feelings we're choosing, there's a lot in that. Like the core four, you know, it's a lot. Our ego wants to do all these other things, but actually the core four has most of it. So the second thing that I wanted to cover today is some of the core premises. If I was to have multiple premise, would that be a premi? If there's more than one premise, is it premises or premi? I don't know. I'm going to go through all the different premises that are available here. Uh, no, I'm not going to go through all of them, but some of the core ones, and again, just uh, just from it. So I don't know, premi sounds a little, a little bit too posh for me. So we're going to go with premises. Premises seems a bit more grounded. <laughs> Not, I'm not posh, you know, I'm not fancy. Just keep it real. Anyway, whatever works, we're going to go through these things. They, they're good things. Uh, so a premise, a premise is something that's not, not necessarily uh, true, but by, uh, by engaging in them as true, by engaging them as true, you get access to information that's very valuable. Okay. So typically, the main problem that people are experiencing in life is that they've been trying to create certain outcomes in their life for years and they still don't have it. You know, they still don't have it. So we're going to, we're going to be teaching you this program is about learning the alchemy of creation and shifting your identity through the five step process, which, uh, which I'm sure you guys all learned. Um, which is this here, choose, create structural tension, emotion, unplug, recode, take action. So there's, there's some mistakes, okay, uh, is that, that people make a lot of times. And the first mistake is they work from the wrong structure, okay? There's only two structures in life. There's only two structures in, in creating your life. One is you're in a problem-oriented structure, and the other one is that you're in a creative-oriented structure. And what you must realize is the action that you're taking determines which structure you're in. So any action, you're either in the action of turning a thought into a thing, or you're in an action of supporting your egoic agenda. So, so think about this. If someone wants to create a new relationship and they are single, the obvious action would be to go on dates. Going on dates would be a creative action. Sitting at home and thinking about going on dates and procrastinating, what would that be? That would be the egoic agenda saying, I don't want to get rejected, so I'm not going to do it. So that's an example of living in the problem orientation, serving the unconscious agenda. Does that make sense? If someone says, I need to make more sales, the obvious action is that you ask more people to buy your product. If they don't ask anyone to buy their product, then they're just buying into the egoic agenda of I don't want to fail. Does this make sense, everyone? If they are in the end result of creating a healthy and vital body and all they all they and the obvious action is that they they exercise and then they don't. You see that they're just playing into this other agenda. And so there's only two structures. There's a the creative structure or there's the problem-oriented structure. Structure And the problem-oriented structure is what most of the world is in. It looks at what's wrong and tries to fix it. So you must learn to make that shift and take action aligned with that which you want to create. Yet, easy to say, not so easy to implement when you've had a lifetime of living out an egoic structure. True? So no judgment. We're all going to fall into the pattern of playing out our egoic structure. Recently, I've had many instances where the, the egoic structures show up again. There's nothing wrong with them. So mistake number two, giving your power away. If I had the money, then I could be free. No, money doesn't give you freedom. Money's just a measurement. 
You can have freedom with or without money. You could have money and be completely stuck. You can have no money and be completely free. Freedom is a choice. If I had this weight loss, then I would be able to go dating. No, you can go dating now. There's nothing wrong with how you are right now. You can still choose to have that. When you put the power in something else, when you say something else will give you something, what you're doing is saying it's powerful, you're not. Does that make sense? And if you're not powerful, then you are powerless. You're less the power. So whenever you're saying that something else has the power to give you something, you know, oh, I, Chris, yeah, I stopped doing my videos because someone um, put some nasty comments underneath the video. Well, that not person had the, had the power. Does that make sense? They had the power. You see? They had the power. They they take they take it away. You know, someone says to me, hey, Chris, I choose the end result of having really happy kids. Why? Because having happy kids makes me happy. Okay, cool. The power is in the kids. They've got the power to make you happy or not happy. You see that? So very important that you have the power. Next is trying to heal the current reality. The current reality doesn't need to be healed or fixed. As soon as you see it as something that needs to be healed, you have to observe New York. And as soon as you observe that it needs to be fixed, you actually lock in that it needs to be fixed. So we do not heal anything. Yet when you create a healthy body, it looks like you healed. <laughs> Give me a yes if you get that. If you, if you create a healthy body, the diagnosis is no longer there. If you look at the diagnosis trying to fix it, you're putting all the energy in the diagnosis. If you have to avoid something, the thing has to exist. The next is thinking you will change when you achieve a result. You won't change. You'll just be you with better health. You'll be just you with more money in the bank account. You'll just be the same you driving around in a more expensive car. You'll just be the you with somebody else that sleeps on the other side of your bed. You won't change. You shift now. The now is where the change happens, not when you get somewhere. Uh, you know, I've had this experience of many people is they never can arrive at what they choose because that they've never practiced being it. If you haven't practiced being it, if your unconscious doesn't know it's safe to be abundant and happy and joyful and in love, then, then it's not safe to have that result. You will not change when you get there and we must give that up, let that go. You, you are how you are now, choose to be exactly as you wanna be now, be it to see it. If you're out of emotional alignment with what you desire, is, is adding to that. You cannot grow an abundance tree planting seeds of scarcity. You cannot walk around being critical of yourself and, and planting that into the field of consciousness, trying to be happy. You can't go around being lonely, trying to create love. You, you've got to be it. You, you've got to access it, access it now. If you can't get it now, if you can't be joyfully creating that which you love, then, then you're never going to have that which you love. It happens now. Does that make sense, everybody? It's now. You just arrived now. You, you're allowed to be happy and still be creating more money. That's totally fine. You're allowed to be happy and still be creating, uh, you know, uh, the love of your life. You, abso that's absolutely, that's actually the only way. You give it to yourself first. You become it first. Remember, everything is created twice. And this is actually a natural law. So the next one here is not following natural laws. Everything is created twice. If I held up an acorn, that acorn, we can break it apart. We will never see the instructions to turn into an oak tree. See, a natural law is it's created in the invisible first. If you hold up a seed, you will actually be holding the, the potential of a forest in your hand. And, and that's the same with us. What you see here in the physical is just the seed. The potential of what's to be created is there. There's natural rhythms. First you plant, you, you know, you, you sow, then you reap. There's different seasons. You must understand that there are natural laws. Just because you've meditated on something once doesn't mean that it shows up tomorrow. A human being takes nine months to be created. Does that make sense? There are natural laws and rhythms. If you put gravity on something, everything will flow to it. There is a path of least resistance. You create the structure, energy will flow along the path of least resistance. You see, that is a natural law. If you want, if water is flowing down an aqueduct and you want it to go left, but the aqueduct goes right, you don't tell the water off. The natural law is the, that the energy will flow down the path of least resistance. You must change the structure. There is just a natural law. The water is not wrong. The water is not wrong. It's the structure. So we must follow natural laws. Next, massive mistake, not going for what you love. The only way to be a creator is to be all in on being a creator. And a creator goes for what they love. 
And, and this might not be something you're used for. So you might want to change it to not going for what you would like. See, what you choose. You've got to be a creator in every aspect. Everything touches everything. You must be all in. The way you're creating your marriage is the same way you're creating your business, the same way you're creating your friendships. It's the same way you're creating your, your health. You know, you, you create the same. You're, you're the same person. If you're giving excuses, if you want to have, by the way, there's no judgment. You have any body you want. But if you choose to have a fit, healthy body and you don't follow through, don't want, you, you can, and you don't follow through, you don't go for it, don't wonder why your business isn't growing. You know, if if you don't, if you want to be in a relationship and you don't go for it, you know, and you, and you hold back, don't, don't wonder why, you know, you're not writing your book fast, right? If you if you want to have a, a great relationship with your son or daughter and, and you're not going for it and making it happen, you've got to realize that you're just one consciousness and your consciousness is always listening. Does that make sense? It's always listening. And so it wants you to, it wants to know how it is, how you're supposed to be. So everything touches everything. You're allowed to have any relationship, any body shape, any amount of money. You're allowed anything. There's no judgment. It's just if it is a true choice. And if you don't go for it, that is going to teach your consciousness how to go for it in other areas of life. Does that make sense? You are, you, wherever you go, there you are. Can I get some yeses on that? Is wherever you are, wherever you go, there you are. If you don't go for where you what you love, if you don't follow through, which is the next thing, if you don't go after it, everything touches everything. You can't be one way in one area and another way in another area. You see, that it's so important. One of the best things to do if you ever want to interview a business partner, bring their spouse along, see how they are in relationship to their um, loved ones, see how they are with their kids, because that's exactly how you're gonna they're gonna be with you. And the last one is holding on to the past as though it is real. The past, unfortunately, was real. Or fortunately, depend on what sort of past you had. But it's no longer here. The only way we actually experience the past is in the present moment. The only way we experience the past is in the present. So the past isn't real. The only thing that's real is how we're relating to it. Some of us are carrying this past around like a big, heavy backpack full of rocks, not realizing that those rocks are only real in our mind. The past only exists in the present. Therefore, no matter how bad or treacherous or downright wrong your past has been, it actually doesn't exist anymore. And just like you have the power to forget someone's name and to forget where you left your keys and to forget what you ate for breakfast three days ago, you have the ability to forget your limitations, forget your trauma, forget your past. You're not broken. <laughs> you don't you don't need you don't have to keep remembering it. It's you that keeps choosing to remember it. And I get that there would be some bad stuff that might have happened, but does not mean it's real. You just experience the past in the present, which means you get to recode and shift that. And so anyway, if you haven't done day one, we cover this and a bunch more stuff on day one. But is it a nice recap? This is what we're doing here. We're learning to become super conscious creators. When we refer to super conscious, it's not some deity. It's not replacing some God. It's your highest level of creative spirit. It's the aspect of, of, of all of us that when Jay-Z writes a new rap album, he goes to and makes it up. When you're playing with your kids and you're in imagination, you're in your highest level of consciousness. When you, when you, when you draw, when you create, that super conscious. Super conscious is creative. It's your imaginative, inventive aspect of you. We all can access it. And the more that we learn to access it and create our life, the better off our life can turn out. Your life should be art. Create your life like art. You start with a blank canvas and a pen and you get to write it. Artists don't problem solve. They create, they sculpt, they mold, they turn it from their, their brain into something. That's how music is made. When you can create your life like music and art and books are written and, and, and things are invented, that's when it changes. We're not here to problem solve or develop someone's persona. We're here to learn creativity. We do it by becoming it, being a magnet for it, being engaged with it, understanding it. It's very different. And that's why what we do here at Magnetic Mind is actually the most advanced 
personal development program on the planet because we're actually allowing everyone to be okay with how they are while accessing a part of them to create a life they love. And by doing that, engaging in that, aspects of them will melt away that are no longer useful. This is the most advanced program there is. You can't get more advanced. Magnetic Mind, Superconscious Mastery Program, what we're teaching you here, the full curriculum, this is it. Hey, this is this is the advanced stuff. Can I just get some feedback in the chat box? It is, eh? It is the most advanced. This is it. This is the final, the final frontier. This is the way it is. Is, is we don't need to do, there's nothing wrong with those other, let's get hyped up, let's jump around, you know, let's focus on how we're broken and, and change beliefs and hypnosis. This is nothing wrong with tapping our way out of things or giving energy. That's all great. It's, it's, you know, just like elementary school is great. Well, we're in university here. Makes sense. Like it's okay. Kindergarten was great. No judgment. We're just, we're not talking that level. We're talking the most advanced stuff. And so just know that when you engage your consciousness in this way, when you become a conscious creator and you access your superconscious, magic happens. Magic happens. And it's unexplainable. Magic happens. And so it's very, very important um, that, that we understand this and we really, we really get it.